right, folks. Happy Friday. Good to see you. Hudson the cat says hi. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk to you folks today about one of my favorite, actually my absolute favorite holiday. I have a favorite holiday. It's not Christmas. It's not Hanukkah. It's not Easter. It is a holiday called Mardi Gras. Now, Mardi Gras is, is a holiday that I will explain more in detail as it gets closer, but it is very, very closely related to Easter. Mardi Gras always happens 40 days before Easter. Now, you might be wondering, Mr. Pulley, why are we talking about holidays? Well, there is a, a music that is very, very, very closely associated with Mardi Gras. New Orleans has the biggest Mardi Gras parade in the world, and it has the, in my opinion, the best music in the world. I love New Orleans jazz. I actually play New Orleans jazz. I have a band that plays New Orleans jazz. And so I wanted to kind of give you some of the, the, the influences and the history of how New Orleans jazz came to be. Now, last week we listened to clarinet marmalade. You got to see or listen to uh, Edmund Hall playing the clarinet with the Louis Armstrong band. That is the primary Mardi Gras music. However, over time, you uh, the Mardi Gras music has kind of evolved into this weird, special kind of music. So New Orleans jazz is the is the the biggest ingredient in the recipe, if you will. Um, there is a big, strong influence from marching bands. So if you've ever been to a parade and you've seen the marching band go down the street in the parade, marching bands have a huge influence on Mardi Gras music. And so I wanted to show you some of the uh, great American marches uh, by a gentleman named John Philip Sousa. John Philip Sousa wrote dozens, maybe even over a hundred American marches uh, that influenced what Americans consider popular music. And so we're going to listen to a famous march by John Philip Sousa called the Liberty Bell March. So listen for all these different instruments and uh, enjoy it. <laughs> 